Hey everybody! Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. If you are new to the channel, welcome! And if you are returning, what's up? So, I am jumping on to do another conversation for you guys. For all of us, actually. Um, I have been feeling guided to do a conversation around um, unconditional love. What is unconditional love? How can we better understand the nature of unconditional love? Um, originally, I wanted to make this like a twin flame conversation as I am on a twin flame journey myself and I, I have come to understand that I am very much a guide for those of us that are on this journey. <clears throat> and not even just twins, just, you know, a guide for everyone really. I'm a, I'm a card reader I, and, I, and I don't really pigeonhole myself where, you know, is just a twin flame guide. But because I am on this journey myself, um, I am, I and others of us that are on this journey are faced with the challenge of accepting and understanding unconditional love. And for the, and, and from there, um, it is our duty to then bring that to the rest of society and the rest of the world and help others, help teach others about it and help others understand it. So I was originally going to just call this a, uh, twin flame conversation, but in thinking about it, I'm like, well, but this is a conversation we should be having with everybody. So this is the first official true divine conversation. Woo! That is exciting. Um, so this is meant for everybody. If you were led to this and, um, you know, you're, it, it, the, the title piqued your interest, please stick around. Let's chat. Yeah. And so true to uh, my form... <laughs> True to form, this is a conversation. This is not like a serious, like crazy, like um, let's, you know, dig down to the surface and, you know, underneath the surface, did all crazy about it. No, I just want to have a conversation with you guys. So because of that, I invite you to grab a beer, grab a cocktail. In my case, big old glass of wine. <laughs> uh, smoke them if you got them. And get comfortable. You can pause the video here if you like, get yourself settled, and then rejoin us when you're ready. And let's talk, yeah? Okay, all right, cool. So let's get into this. I'm going to be doing this from a mental point of view, all right? So I am going to be doing this a lot like the mental check-in videos that I do. The most recent one I did was the, um, the conversation about, um, what was that? What was it? Oh, current challenges that the twins were, face, were facing. Um, but this one instead is going to be me asking the universe um, the question of how can we better understand unconditional love? Um, what do we need to understand more about unconditional love so that we can be more accepting towards it? Yes? Mm. And so I'm going to be starting with the... Uh, uh, Oracle of Visions deck by Ciro Marchetti. And I'm going to be, I, I'll pull, I think I want to pull like three cards from that, three messages from that deck. Uh, and then I'm going to be clarifying things with the traditional tarot. Uh, well, this isn't the traditional tarot. This is the tarot apocalypsis. So here, I'll do it this way. I'm starting with this Oracle of Visions. I am clarifying with... Tarot Apocalypsis. I love this deck, guys. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. If you're new to the channel, you will be experiencing this deck for the first time. and Well, maybe the first time. Who knows? Maybe you've come across it in the past. And the, But the artwork on the deck is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then I'm going to be pulling some oracles. I'm not quite sure where I want to go with that yet. I know I want to go with the Whispers of Love. And most likely the Crystal Mandala. Because this... This Crystal Mandala deck, of all of my Oracle decks right now, this one is my favorite. And then I might be pulling some or some some unicorn cards. I have been feeling the unicorns lately. I love unicorns. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get into this now. So I'm just going to put this off to the side. I'm going to grab my Oracle of Visions deck here. All right, guys. Cheers to you. Let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, spirit, please make me a clear channel in this moment in time for a divine conversation. 
please make me a clear channel for the messages that you wish to bring forward for us, all of us, everyone who watches this video, in relation to unconditional love. What can we understand more? What do we need to understand more in order to be more open and accepting of unconditional love? I have one more question. What is, can you please attach uh, your message with this as well? Please help us understand unconditional love from a deeper point of view. Thank you, Spirit. Ooh, that was intense, guys. Whoa, okay, let's get into this. So I'm just gonna shuffle up for a little bit. So bear with me here. We'll give it three shuffles. All right, and I'm gonna cut. All right, here we go. So I'm going to pull one card from the bottom. This is going to be our overall message here. Hmm. Very interesting. We have card number 10. Wow. And this is knowledge, okay? This is, this is learning. Aha. 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 There are two messages at the bottom. We have card number 19. And the first card, uh, the first thing I saw, I heard when I saw this card is detachment. Now that is a conversation that I can get into with the twins here. And then I will, um, wow, this is probably going to be a pretty long message because I still want to pull three cards from the top of the deck. Okay. Um, but overall, this is what we have going on right now. Um, I'm going to start with card number 10. Card number 10 is talking about learned knowledge, um, acquired knowledge, seeking information. Um, but if you see here, this person is, wow, my left ear is ringing. Uh, this person is bogged down. It's like they have a choker for, for made of books. You know what I mean? It's like they're so consumed with knowledge and um, what I'm really getting is physical and I'm hearing the 3D world, tangible evidence that they're being constricted. Conformity. Ooh. That's the name of the video. It wasn't about what our current challenge is. The last um, reading I did in this way, it was releasing conformity. Okay, so this is an extension of that message. Maybe this is why I wanted to do this one so bad because what we're going to be talking about here tonight apparently is, or today, depending on where you what what time it is you're watching this, but um, it's an extension of that message of releasing conformity. So I would encourage everyone to watch that video if you like. Um, I'm really getting a sense with this card here that um, when it comes to unconditional love, there is too much emphasis on learned behavior in the sense that we must have concrete, tangible evidence to accept anything. A lack of faith is also what's coming through here. Now, this is an overall energy. Um, and now I, I want to, I do want to clarify that a little bit, um, without even getting to the tarot. I am not suggesting that anyone make themselves excessively vulnerable. Okay. But it does come a point where people, there come, there comes a point where people are just too rigid and too logical in the sense that they lose all all forms of vulnerability. And to be quite honest, you you cannot be on this planet as a human, as any sort of life, living being. You don't even need to be a living being. You could be an inanimate object. But you still have to deal with vulnerability. And as a human, vulnerability is an immense strength. 
to be able to put yourself in a position and be vulnerable, be trusting of the situation, to be able to maintain a high enough vibration so that you're not attracting situations that are going to just, that are just looking to tear you down. You know what I mean? But to still enter a situation, not really being too sure about it, but still willing to be vulnerable enough to be able to contribute in a loving and compassionate manner and to not be afraid of vulnerability, to be able to be willing to allow your vulnerability to be a guide to teach you the lessons that you want, that you need to learn in this lifetime. All of that is an immense strength. If you can approach life from that point of view, then let me tell you, honey, you are golden. Golden. Because honestly, if you're approaching life from that sense of vulnerability, I can't really imagine that you're, type, you're the type of person or you're in the type of vibration to want to run around taking advantage of people 11-11 on the counter. Why? Because you don't want to be taken advantage of. And yeah, you're place you're 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 approaching this situation from a, you know a healthy dose of vulnerability. But if you're comfortable with that, then you know what it's like to be hurt, and you're not trying to do that to anyone else, right? I would definitely say so. So when it comes to this, it's a it's a need to not be so rigid. Rigidity is the word that's really coming to mind with this card in relation to unconditional love. Loosen up a little bit. I'm not asking you to completely abolish your boundaries. No, one still needs boundaries. But we have allowed ourselves, and in many cases, in many cases, this is where the conformity comes in. We have been required to become so rigid to be acceptable in life because of a fear of vulnerability. Yeah? So when it comes to unconditional love, what is unconditional love? What can we learn more about un unconditional love to be more accepting of it? Number one, step number one, become acquainted with vulnerability. You cannot love someone and you cannot allow someone else to love you without being vulnerable, period. So if you're looking for love, you must get, a, get acquainted with vulnerability first. Second overall energy here, we have card number 19. And this card, in relation to um, what's going on, what, in relation to the question that we've asked, this card is talking about detachment. And it's so funny because this is not really, now that I think about it, this is not really the detachment card. Let me look in this book. Um, there's another card in this deck that is literally release, letting something go. So let me look at the book here. Because this, that honestly, when I saw the card, it was the first thing in mind. Okay, so in this deck, this is contemplation, analysis, and awareness. But I guess it was the um, it was the monkey on a string. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey on a string that was saying to that said detachment to me. Okay, but the card is about uh, contemplation and awareness. And okay, so I do want to talk about detachment, but but now I understand what this means by in awareness in relation to the question that we asked, because this is a card that wanted to come out. Um, awareness. <sighs> How can you approach unconditional love? What do we need to know more about unconditional love in order to be um, more accepting of it? Self-awareness. The, re the, the, the main reason, at least in my, in my experience in life, the main reason why people have so many problems in their interpersonal relationships and their romantic relationships, why people have such knockdown, drag out fights sometimes, you know, like extreme lovers quarrels and extreme family feuds and all that shit. Like the reason why that happens is because, well, mostly because the individuals involved are not willing to go within and understand the situation from how their 
approaching it and what they have done to contribute to the situation. Instead, what they would rather do is stand there all high and mighty and blame the other party for the situation, saying it's all their fault because the individual doing the blaming doesn't want to accept the fact that they have some things that they need to face within themselves that have contributed to the situation. And let me tell you, I'm no saint. I've been there too. I grew up blaming everyone else around me for what I was experiencing instead of taking responsibility for it and doing the work to pull myself out of it. And that's not fair. It's not fair to me and it's not fair to the other people involved. Awareness is key. And this is, and this is mostly why. You cannot... If, if, if you're looking for love or if you're looking to love someone else, you cannot attract the love you truly desire or even deserve if you don't already give that love to yourself first. And you can't give yourself that love that you truly want without knowing yourself because if you don't know yourself, if you're not aware of who you are and what you truly desire and what your challenges are, then how do you know what you really want out of a relationship, right? So if you don't do the in, inner work, so, so, okay, fine. Okay, so cool. So let's talk about it. Let's say it this way. It, you're out there looking for love, right? And you're like, I want it to look like X, Y, and Z. But you don't realize that it looking like X, Y, and Z is just a hodgepodge of different opinions that you said, oh, yeah, I like that. I'll accept that. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what you truly want, but because you don't, but because you're not aware of what you truly want, because you're not aware of yourself. If you're seeing a bunch of smoke in front of the camera, I just lit my sage smudge. Um, but if you're not aware of what you truly want, I'm sorry, if you're not aware of yourself and who you really are and how you truly operate, then you really don't know what you truly want. So yeah, you're just going to run around accepting a bunch of opinions from other people. Say, yeah, that sounds good. I'll take this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. Oh, and definitely a little bit of that, honey. Yes, girl. But then you put it all together and you work and you work and you work and you finally attract someone that fits all these things. Or at least maybe not all of them, but some of them. And that a whole situation takes. And now you're like, what the F? Why did this happen? Well, honey... That wasn't authentic to you. That's not what you truly wanted. What do I truly want? I don't know. Maybe you should start digging. And here's where it comes, here's where we circle back to unconditional love. Because if you can love yourself unconditionally, flaws and all, and still give yourself the world, then you will attract the partner that will do that for you. Reciprocate that for you. That's where awareness comes into play. Wow. Lord, guys, that was deep, deep, deep. I know I said I wanted to pull. No. <laughs> I wanted to pull more, but those were some sufficient messages. Like, that came out right there. Right then and there. So now what I want to do, now what I want to do is, um, yeah. I'm sorry. I keep I keep going back and I'm like, really, guys? Aren't there any more? No, there's definitely no more, Eric. You said it right there. Okay, great. So now I want to pull some clarifiers. You know, get, I'll get some deeper messages, some things that I may have missed from the tarot. So, Spirit, please, uh, please give us some clarifiers for these two cards. And actually, instead of just calling it by the card number, because I know 19 is awareness. What is number 10? 10 is, yeah, knowledge, research, knowing the facts, being prepared, forewarned. Mm. 
right. I don't want to read the book because the book doesn't is not saying speaking to this the way spirit is bringing the messages through. Um, and the message for that was being over over informed because all I see is someone that is just bogged down by a bunch of information. And detachment does come into play with card number 19 or awareness because we really need to detach. We need to detach from what everyone else thinks this should be, right? And detachment, all, okay, I want to talk about detachment too. Detachment also comes into play. You cannot love someone condition, unconditionally and hold on to them for dear life and not let them go anywhere. If they if if you love if you truly love something unconditionally, you can let go of them and let them fly away. Which is why I wish that card had come out, but I feel like I'm gonna open up a whole can of worms if I start pulling more cards. Um, but that's why it was spoken to me because the messages, the rest of the messages came through this card. But then we need to talk about detachment too, which is why the which is why the monkey's there. Okay, great, Eric, relax. The message is coming through. <laughs> but you cannot love something or someone unconditionally and keep them in a cage. If they need to fly away to do some work on their own to to, to experience something or whatnot, let them go. It is not loving. It is not loving. It is not loving to keep something or someone in a cage when they really want to be free. That's entrapment. That is not unconditional love. I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right. So, some clarifiers. Okay, I'll give this one more shuffle. So, for knowledge, spirit, two cards, please. One, two of swords, and two, the six of cups. Okay. All right, so the two of swords in reverse is talking about um, not knowing which way to go. Not, is, in this case, in this scenario, it's like not having all the answers. And not knowing which which move to make, um, and I'm picking up. And actually, it's funny that swords came out here because the swords are about uh, logic and knowledge and um, mental processes. And what we were saying here with with awareness and knowledge is that we are we overemphasize the analytical and mental point of view here. Love isn't always going to make logical sense, guys. I, <laughs> I don't I really I don't know what else you want me to say about that. Love isn't always going to make logical sense. And just because it doesn't make logical sense doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. If the two of swords came out upright, and I actually really like this is one of the two decks that I have where I really appreciate the two of swords depiction because I don't always see the two of swords as a bad thing when it's upright in this deck look at it this man is sitting at a table playing a board game what is it I don't think this is chess I don't know but he's playing a game of logic and he's sitting there trying to make sure he, he, he makes the best move trying to figure out his next move but here in reverse I'm I'm picking up confusion uncertainty but an oh i'm also picking up an overemphasis on logical thought love rarely does love make sense like okay take me for example i am on a twin flame journey and with all of the things that have gone on on this journey so far logically i should be walking away right now he probably should be walking away right now from his point of view, I'm some crazy, some some crazy whatever, chasing after him. And from my point of view, I'm some crazy whatever chasing after someone that apparently, or at least on the surface, wants nothing to do with me. Yet, I know how I feel, and I know what I'm connected to, 
And I know what Source is guiding me to do. And Source is guiding me to continue on my path and to love this person unconditionally, which means loving them even though they do things, even though, you know, things have gone on that are not ideal. And I'm not trying to put all the blame on him because I've done some shit that's not ideal also. And so if you're on a twin flame journey, you know what I'm talking about. And the, 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 message there, the message there is love them unconditionally because they're going through things that you don't even know. You don't even know what's going on in their lives. You don't even know the wounds that these people are acting from. Which brings me to my next, the next card that came out, the Six of Cups. Approaching the world and love with the wide-eyed, wondered, the wide-wondered, yeah, the wide-eyed and wonderful look, gaze of a child. Children do not come into this world conditioned to be closed off and, and judgmental and not accepting. That is a learned behavior that we, oh my God, whoa, the messages are really connecting. Learned behavior. You remember? That's one of the things I said about this card when it came out. We are taught through life experience and through the teachings of the adults around us and those we come in contact with as we grow. We are taught to be extremely discerning, cold even. But a child doesn't see it that way. Now this is also, the Six of Cups is also speaking to childhood wounds that are deeply, deeply embedded. And that's where we get to what I was saying about, um, you know, still loving someone even though they're acting or treating another person in ways that, excuse my friend, uh, excuse my language, but shitty. I mean, if they're continually treating you this way in this really un in undesirable ways, um, no one is saying to stick around, especially if your heart is guiding you to distance yourself. But if your heart is saying, wait, no, give this another chance, you don't quite understand, that's where unconditional love comes in. That's where compassion comes in. It's like, okay, okay, look, I really know how, I know how I feel about you. And I'm getting the sense that there's something going on here that I'm not quite aware of. So I'm going to distance myself, but I'm still going to be here for you and love you unconditionally because something tells me you're hurting. And whatever we just went through, however you just lashed out at me, however I just lashed out at you, it really has more to do. It, like if you were to lash out at me, it's like, okay, well, I know this has more to do with you than it does with me. Or if I were to lash out to you, it's like, okay, well, this has more to do with me than it does to you. You know what I mean? That is unconditional love. Now, I'm not saying that you need to stand there and keep yourself in the middle of the fire. No, distance, like protect yourself. But don't do it from a place of, ah, oh, F you, you're a piece of poo, da, na na to hell with you. No, no, no. <laughs> no. All right. Moving on to awareness and also detachment, spirit. Two cards, please. One and two. Oh, we got three. We got three. Okay. We're also getting messages of codependency. We've got the Five of Pentacles. We've got the Queen of Swords in reverse. And we've got... Oh, my goodness. We've got the Hermit in reverse. And, the her and this was... And with this card... Awareness, I was saying you need to know yourself. You need to be aware of yourself in order to love unconditionally. You need to be able, you need to be aware of yourself and give yourself that unconditional love of flaws and all, honey. You get it all. Because I love you. And if you make a mistake, oh well, you made a mistake. I still love you. The hermit is major arcana. The hermit is, I'm sorry guys, I have my window open. It's a really gorgeous day. I really want the um, fresh air. If 
the dog barking gets too much, I'll let you know. But or I'll close it. But honestly, I'm taking that as a sign as like this is a big, big part of the situation. The hermit is about going within to find oneself. To find that light within, to find that guru within, to find that inner truth, and then work towards bringing it out. But you see here, the hermit is reversed. I really feel like our society, <clears throat> as it stands right now, is um, complete, so, ad so horrifically adverse towards knowing ourselves. We would rather spend our lives making ourselves into a carbon copy of those around us that are deemed acceptable. And this is why you, uh, this is why I really encourage you guys to watch the, um, the releasing co uh, conformity video that I posted a few days ago, because it's exactly what we're talking about here. We are so consumed with making ourselves fit into the circles that are already deemed acceptable that we completely lose ourselves. And we act out in ways that are very much like the Queen of Swords. Now, upright, the Queen of Swords is Queen Bee, okay? She is not about the drama. She is logical. And she is one to give you a second chance should you be able to proficiently prove your case. But as soon as you start bringing that drama into her life, she will cut you out, okay? But you see here, the Queen of Swords came out reversed. Now the Queen of Swords reversed, ain't got no tact, ain't got no diplomacy. She's just running around cutting people up for the hell of it. She's mentally manipulative. She plays mind games. And that's really... What this conformity that we're talking about is, it's just one big mind game. That in no way is unconditional love. And when you, and when you live your life from that point of view, you have the five of pentacles. Lack. Lack of self-worth. Feeling left out in the cold. And in essence, you really are leaving yourself out in the cold because you're denying your true inner being. You're denying who you really are. You're denying yourself that unconditional love. Because the love we're talking about here, all this conformity, all this trying to fit in and trying to be a carbon copy and one of and someone who is acceptable by all the people around you, that is conditional. That is heavily conditional. And that will never bring you the true passionate, unconditional love that you seek. Wow, this is a powerful message, guys. Wow. I'm sorry. I mean, I was just, I was really just going for it. So I need, I need a little bit of a moment to take that in. Woo! Okay. <sighs> All right, so what I want to do now is I want to get some action steps. 33, 33 on the counter. I want to take some action advice, and I want to get it from the unicorns. And I want to ask the unicorns and spirit to give us... Um, the best advice action-wise on what we can do to heal, how we can bring more unconditional love into our lives. That's the question. Unicorns, please help us understand what we can do to help bring more unconditional love into, whoa, into our lives. <laughs> you know what the unicorns just said with that? They were like, well, where do we begin? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, one more shuffle. <laughs> and if you were just listening, if you missed that, I highly recommend that you rewind a little bit and see that. Because literally all the cards just came like sliding out. And they were literally saying, geez, where do we begin? <laughs> okay, so two messages, please. Oop, there's one. And here's the other. Okay. That was easy. 
All right, so the first card we have is Delight. Count your blessings and enjoy life. Take pleasure in simple things. Always expect the best. Yeah. Let your wings, let yourself open up those wings and just fly. Who cares? Who cares what everyone else has to say? Just be you. Do you. Do what it is that you want authentically. Stop allowing other, uh, I swear to God, we might as well be talking about that conformity video. I mean, stop. Stop allowing other people to tell you what to do and who to be. That is conditional love, guys. And that does not, that never feels good. Even if you can do it successfully, be the best at it, and, and, and win all the races and all that shit, fuck it. Because ultimately, deep down, you are not your authentic self. You are, you are a carbon copy. You are, you are living someone else's life, not yours. And I know none of us signed up to come down to this planet in this time in its history, in this rough and tumble time in its history, to live life for others. We, are, we have come here, yeah, we can live with other people, we can be of service to other people, but ultimately, our lives are ours, and we have every right to be happy. And if that means that people don't want, that don't want you to be happy the way you want to be happy, get cut out of your life, so be it, because you will be better off in the end. Oh, hallelujah, can I get an amen? The second one is, Lord, have mercy, this is too perfect. Freedom. Live wild and free. Choose your freedom. Claim your independence. My goodness. I mean, literally, I was just saying that. So I really don't think there's any more to say there. Thank you, unicorns. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. I really need a second. Okay. All right, I just want to get some, um, just some advice. I'm going to say one card of advice from the Whispers of Love, and then I'm going to fit. Okay, there they are. We got three. <laughs> Have faith. Now, faith is definitely something that is needed when it comes to unconditional love. Just have faith. You don't need to know all the answers all the time. You can't. Have faith. Receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. Now, this is a message towards vulnerability. You must be open to receiving unconditional love. Now, the advice coming through at this moment is it's better to acquaint yourself with what true unconditional love feels like. Well, no, it's necessary. It is necessary for your protection, really. It is necessary for you to equate your, acquaint yourself with what true unconditional love feels like by first providing it to yourself, okay? Because then you can be solid and confident enough to open your heart to receiving it from someone else. And you, it is imperative that you know what unconditional love feels like before you start letting other people try and give it to you. Because if you don't know what it feels like, then the next, the first person that comes around that gives you something give, feels gives you something that feels good, you'll let them in, not knowing that they actually may just be there to drain you. You know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just, hey, just trying to forewarn you. This is why. This is one of the reasons why it is imperative that you give this to yourself first, okay? So be open to receive, I mean, because if you're open, if you, if you practice it within yourself first, that will open you up to be feeling more comfortable to receive it from outside sources. <coughs> Excuse me, because you're more acquainted with it. Logically, <laughs> hello, logically speaking, if you're more acquainted to, if you're more acquainted with it by giving it to yourself first, then of course you can receive it from someone else. And finally, and this is exactly what we were talking about earlier, practice compassion. See things from a different perspective. Try and see things from someone else's perspective. If you know you have a deep and profound connection with somebody, 
And yet there are things going on that are way less than desirable. Okay, no one is saying you have to keep yourself in that sort of situation, but don't discredit them. Don't write them off as a monster or a pers a, an awful person because that is, I promise you, that is never the case. Always someone that is acting from a, a, a low vibrational, manipulative, mean, nasty, abusive relation, uh, 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 position in your relationship with them, they're acting from a place of hurt. There is something that went on. And and this could be very much deep, deeply, deeply rooted. Now, I do believe that we take on karma from past lives and also ancestral karma, okay? But ultimately, that's still a reason, guys. Now, if it's one of those situations where it's deeply rooted karma from their past lives or from, um, from uh, uh, or it's like family karma, then the chances of you being around in their lives when it's fixed are might be a little slim. But you can still release them with love and compassion and understanding. Because ultimately, even if they screwed you over, you still learned something from it, didn't you? And if you didn't, mm, that's on you, boo. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Finally... I want to get some advice from the Crystal Mandala deck. I love this deck. I love it to pieces, y'all. <laughs> Just some... I mean, I don't even really have a, a, a specific question when it comes to this deck. I really would like Spirit to just bring forward the best messages in relation to this reading from the Crystal Mandala deck. Please and oh, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more shuffle. Okay, so spirit, we'll say best messages, please. Spirit, this one. Discernment. Yep. We've got She Shall Always Prevail. And one more. One more, please, Spirit. There it is. This one. So it shall be. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I um, feel like I don't really want to channel with this right now. I... Um, Oh my God. Wow. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there are some things happening right now that I would... Woo! Okay, this is a really great reading. This is a really great reading. Um, but I don't really want... I'm not really... I'm being, I'm being guided to just read straight from the book from this. For these. So first, we have... Uh, card number 22, Ascended Master Hilarion and Green Chrysophase, Discernment. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful green color. Love it. So already that's talking about some chakra, a heart chakra healing, love. Now the, the official color, if you want to call it official, but the color of unconditional love is pink. But the, here this is talking about um, healing of the heart chakra. Yeah. And all, okay, fine. I am going to channel a little bit. Already the, um, <laughs> already, um, I'm picking up on some heart chakra healing that is necessary in order to, um, to really start to do, to tango with unconditional love. And that has to do with the extreme discernment that we find ourselves in this society. We bring you the blessing of discernment. There is an expression that all that glitters is not gold and that appearances can deceive. This does not mean you must greet the world and all its appearances with suspicion and distrust, you see? It does mean it is wise to trust what you feel and sense happening beneath the surface, even if that seems to directly oppose 
<laughs> what is being said or what many others may believe. Oh, man. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and let the book talk because <laughs> I've already said some of this stuff. The world is filled with opportunities for you to practice sensing truth behind the mask. You Now, please understand. Please take that as... Um, even if you're seeing something negative on the surface, if in your heart, in your feeling space, you know it's different than what you're being shown on the surface, go with it, okay? Um, you will do this most accurate, okay, I'm oh, sorry. The world is filled with opportunities for you to practice sensing truth behind the mask. You will do this most accurately when you allow your instincts and intuition to inform you without rationalizing the information so it matches the superficial appearance of things. If intuition or instinct is niggling at you, then it is trying to communicate something. Listen. Take your time to feel your authentic response. Discernment, discernment helps you cut through illusion, manipulation, and deception and get to the heart of the matter at hand. It is the intelligent use of your intuition and instincts that will help you navigate through the multitude of choices available to you every day and choose what best serves your life's journey. Can we drink to that, y'all? I mean, come on. Yes. Oh, wow. This, honestly, this is really turning into a very, very beautiful reading. Next, we have card number 51. Goddess Isis and Isis Crystal. She shall always prevail. And actually, I am very blessed. I feel very blessed and I'm very honored that Goddess Isis has come out in this reading. She has come forward and I almost want to cry. <laughs> it's really kind of a beautiful thing. Card number 51. Yes, and she's, yes. Oh. She shall always prevail. We bring you the empowerment of she shall always prevail. There is something magnificent in the human spirit when one chooses to believe in oneself. Life rallies to strengthen and encourage it. It is the expression of will to live, not from a place of fear of death, but of a brave, divinely defiant boldness that refuses to give up on what matters most. You have had your share of heartbreak and disappointment. And yet, rather than bitterness in your heart, you choose love. You have your moments of doubt and despair. And yet, deep in your heart, you choose to continue on. You have the spirit of Isis in you. And just like the universal mother expressing herself through Isis, you too shall prevail. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story, goddess Isis... Um, and Osiris, I believe, was her husband. Please correct me if I am wrong. I have, I'm not really studying this type of mythology, but I am familiar with this story. But Osiris was killed and, um, was his, by, uh, his brother, I believe. And his body was chopped up into 14 pieces, I believe, and scattered all over the world. And Isis took on the challenge of finding all of his pieces and putting them back together and resurrecting him. Of course, she could not find his reproductive organs, but she still resurrected him in the end. So that's what that means by, that's what they mean here by, and just like the, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Um, where was it? Oh, and that's what they mean by you have the spirit of Isis in you because she went through such immense heartbreak. Uh, Isis and Osiris are considered to be um, one expression of the original twin flame situation. Let me just, uh, you know what, before I, um, I just want to make sure. Yes, Osiris is his name. Osiris was killed by his brother Set, and Isis was his wife, and she felt that, I mean, she, she dedicated herself, dedicated herself to finding every inch of that man, even though she couldn't. Ultimately, she 
she got enough of him back to resurrect him. Imagine how heartbreaking that is. Now look, I hear I hear the logical mind stepping in. Oh, that's just a myth. That's just a myth. I don't give a damn if it's a myth or if it's actually truth. The story itself, and this is this is where all of that information has come, all of that uh, uh, emphasis, overemphasis on logical thought comes in. Think about the 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 the, the lesson behind the story. Okay, just for one second. Lay down your sword of logic and fantasize with me just for a moment. Think about that. You love somebody so much, so much to find each and every one of their pieces and put them back together to resurrect them after they've been cut into 14 pieces and scattered all over the world. That is unconditional love right there. And this is why I damn near want to cry because Isis has come out in this in this reading. Isis and Osiris are the original twin flames. You can, it is you can say that Jesus and Mother Mary are also an expression, but Isis is the one who came out here. And in terms of that story, that is the original twin flame journey. That is unconditional love. Okay. Finally, we have card number 35, Ascended Master Babaji and Diamond. So it shall be. Woo! This is powerful stuff, guys. So it shall be. We bring you the blessing of so it shall be. There are times when you will go through your life journey without any sign of what's going to happen. You may be working hard to heal an issue or build your dream, but not really know if you are ever going to be successful. You may hope for the best, but not know whether you should really expect the worst. You may sense that the universe is asking you to trust in how things are going to turn out, and yet giving up your uncertainty is difficult. That usually means total and uncompromising commitment is difficult too. Where there, is where there is uncertainty, there is often hesitation and procrastination. Spirit doesn't want you to miss out on your dreams because you lack faith and therefore are holding yourself back from, quote, going for it with all you have within. So you are being given the blessing of divine decree, of absolute confirmation of success, and the divine granting of a wish fulfilled. Switch your thinking from possibility to inevitability and commit yourself completely. Don't hold back. Go for it with gusto. According to divine will, you shall manifest the highest expression of your divine destiny this lifetime. So shall, so it shall be. I mean, I really don't know what else to say. This has turned into such a powerful reading, guys. Like, so powerful. Like, I'm surprised I'm not bawling. I'm not, like, I'm not in tears right now. Like, I kind of want to cry, but I, damn. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. So, there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, that, I'm turning down the brightness so there's, there's not a bunch of glare. So you can actually see my eyes. Yay! Um, I don't know what else to say, but that was fantastic. There are a lot of really good messages that came out there. I really hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be the channel that brought that through for you. So I love you all. Cheers. And here's to unconditional love. Yeah. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.